Hey there, this is Jenny Chen. I'm the founder of 3D Heels. Welcome to the latest podcast, the official podcast for 3D Heels. This is where you will find fun but in depth conversations with technological game changers, creative minds, entrepreneurs, rule breakers, and more. Focusing on how we can use 3D technologies like 3D printing and bioprinting to reinvent healthcare and even life sciences. This podcast will also include AMA or Ask Me Anything sessions, past Instagram live interviews with influencers, and other direct engagements with our tribe. I think the name printer came from the idea that we have a long history in 3D printing in general and also biomaterials. So I think it was obvious that we came up with the idea to combine those both to become a printer. So that's the very short version of how everything happened. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, a lot of founders in the bioprinting space, they founded the company while they're in school or they're a professor at a school. Um, what is your journey in founding Printer or being becoming part of the company? Yeah, this is actually, I heard your first question uh, wrong. Now, now I hear it much better. So the story began when I was um, born in 1978, uh, 3D blood in my veins. So since I was a little kid, I have been always building something in 3D. And in 1999, I first time saw 3D printing, and um, 2006, I already used it in end products. At uh, that time, it was SLS method. And 2011, we started to think about how to utilize this in business-wise. A couple of years with a couple of colleagues and nowadays founders, co-founders of 3D Tech and Printer. We analyzed some markets and uh, bought our own scanners and printers and, and 3D design softwares. And 2013, we decided to finally start up the company called 3D Tech. Mm -hmm. And 3D Tech worked with uh, two different uh, business units since the beginning. So providing services, designing, printing, scanning, and right leg was developing technology. Mm -hmm. And our first own printer was DLB based that we developed in 2015. And in 2016, we found our passion and the path of the technology business unit. So we were asked to participate in brain printing project. Mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, more than interesting at that time. And we said yes immediately because I felt it in my heart that this is the way that we need to go. Next year after that, 2017, uh, was participated to kidney printing project. Mm -hmm. Again, the same feeling. And we are Within these two projects, we are still working together with the same partners that we started at that time. And during that time, we also started the development of our own first bioprinter. And uh, at that time, we also got the idea about the modular system with this uh, tool changing interface that still brings the printer separate from others. And we have been using that in, in our own R&D project as well. So... After a couple of years, uh, 2020, we separated the companies and now the printer is own separate entity and has nothing to do with the 3D tech anymore. So that's the very long story short how it all happened. Mm -hmm. and, but you picked uh, to be part of printer instead of 3D tech. So you really want to focus on the bio. Yes, I found, I found my passion in 2016. So I know, I know how to combine this bio and life sciences with the technology and engineering to make something that makes a difference. So you mentioned that you are a builder. Um, so you definitely are engineer background. Um, do you have any biology background? I mean, because sometimes, you know, you need to understand a lot of these complicated things, which I'm frankly not. An in. Um, not background, but I have been learning quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I have been learning so much in, in my past that I, I know that I know nothing. So we all will learn through our lives, that's for sure. So that, that's why this may, it's interesting. So the technology develops very fast, but mm. also the results in biology develops as, as fast because we can utilize the technology to help us in that field. So that's yeah. great. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, in the past when people say, "Oh, now we can three D print a heart or three D print a kidney," it's a bit of a hype because no, we can't.、Um, but the technology has been growing in the last decade or so. I would say to a pretty good point where now we can actually perhaps getting closer to that point. Where do you think things are? And where things are heading to?、Uh, only thing that I know for sure that the development cycles has been、uh, speeding up very much since the ten years that we we started, because the collaboration with globally is is something that it hasn't been in the times that we didn't have the computers, and、right. artificial intelligence intelligence has been developing very fast. Engineering side has been developing fast, and and teams together all over the world. For example, kidney. There's a lot of groups that works within the kidney, and most of them are starting to collaborate within each other, if not collaborating already. So the knowledge sharing is is something that we have not seen in the past, and、yeah. the speed, how fast we can get the results within the reach of everybody. So、mm-hmm. we don't know how fast things will be. Going forward, but the estimation for a kidney, for example, somebody says ten years and somebody fifty years. So I guess it's something between. <laughs> so. <laughs> Hopefully, in our lifetime, so we can finish. Oh、uh, yeah, I hope so too. I hope so too. But that's not the easiest part, like you know. So there, there will be some other others before that. Yeah, well, but besides, you know, manufacturing organ, which is pretty, pretty.、Um, uh, Ambitious goal.、Um, you guys are also in the pharma space as well, right? Trying to develop collaboration or products that would be able to work with them. Are you able to share some of that? Yeah, in pharma side, we are collaborating with some some companies, smaller and bigger ones,、uh, developing personalized drugs、mm-hmm. and targeting to GMP manufacturing in the end, like with the same idea that we are targeting with these.、Um, Organs and human spare parts, bio implants and organs. So, in the end, today we have the platform developing all kinds of systems. But on top of that, will be applications which will be selected to clinical versions. So it takes time, but it's, this is the vision in the future. Yeah, you know, one thing when I I remember talking to you several times in the past, including when you guys come onto the pitch platform,、um, is I remember you have a lot of collaborators. I mean, is this like a regional thing? Is like every company in the region would have a lot of collaborator, or you're just like, but I.、Uh, I don't know if it's common, but、uh, m- maybe we are special. But we have a lot of collaborators, and it's、uh, it's again a big plus because, like said, we learn every day something new from all the aspects. So, and when we can utilize the knowledge from different areas into another area. That's something new that we will bring to the table all the time. So when working with pharma companies and uh, some some uh, organ companies are, they have some similarities, but in the end, it's totally different world from the bioprinting or pharma printing point of view.、Right. But when you can combine those and the knowledge, then you are strong. Right. So it does sounds like you have to continue to learn and then kind of improvise and then create your own perspectives about. You know how you want to move forward in the field.、Um, so now let's talk about Brinter a little bit,、uh, because you know when I first encountered you guys,、um, you marketed as the modular printer, bio printer, but modular. I mean, isn't other company also providing modular、uh, components for bio printer? What would make you guys different? I think in. There is companies that provide modular co-、uh, printers, bio printers, but in the end,、um, the concept that we have that the one platform doesn't get old, so to speak, and we can use all the same printing as in the same platform that we have today and in the future, from liquid to solid materials. So we, you don't have to change the machine when you are going to the next level, and、uh, even if we will have a different kind of systems, it will be the same. All the printheads today and tomorrow will be usable with the same platform, and you don't know, need any tool to replace them. So it's research friendly. So, so I, I don't want to talk about too much technology. There is a lot to tell well, you about. But let's leave it here. You're fine. <laughs> technology. We our audiences are okay. By the way, people、um, who are watching this, you can ask your question below. 
uh, I will monitor it and um, just looking at the comments here. Um, very interesting audience. Uh, but you can go into a little bit deeper to technology um, uh, in five minutes, you know, something like that. Uh, you have like about nine products right now. I looked at your website, you have nine uh, printer heads or something like uh, that. We, ha we, have, we have much more, but only for the good partners. So you can see the pu public, publicly sold versions only in the website. So yeah, even for those versions that sold, I'm still kind of just fascinated. Can you explain? how you know yes i understand some printer only for solid some printer is only for liquid but like how what, what are they all look kind of similar to me obviously from outside but like how do you what is the technology behind it that makes each head each printer head different i think usually it's meant for different kind of materials for mm -hmm. example i can actually show you a little bit i mean the Security yeah. level three room, so you, I can show this to you. I, I cannot go to the dark side where all the super secret magic happens, but this is something that I can show you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For example, yeah. oh. cooling, material cooling. So you can cool the material with this printer. So it's needed with some materials. So there's some special systems with all of them that it's related to the material science. So how to utilize it. Here you can see, for example, prototype and the sold version, so the development phase. And that's a simple pneuma tool for basic stuff, so you can heat it up and so on. So, But there's always, it comes to the material science, that what the material needs to be, yeah. how it needs to be handled to be able to print it in 3D shape and keep the shape. So that's yeah. it's in the level. But most of the, uh, the, I mean, it comes down to that you're still a um, uh, extrusion-based printing process, right? So, uh, with some kind of modification because of the printer head. Is that correct to say? Mainly, yeah. But the extrusion-based can be also seen in many different ways. So you can you can spray it or or, or dispense it or print it or different types. So we could utilize laser systems as well in the system, but we have not had that much need at the moment. So yeah, if the need rises, we can implement it. Yeah, I saw there was one printer head that has UV light using light. Um, yeah. What is We have multiple different versions from the printing head. So standard versions and pro versions and pro versions includes different kind of uh, light wave from two, 265, 365, 405, and 450 nanometers. So depending again on what the material needs to be hardened. Now, the material you're talking about, does that include cells? Because sometimes, you know, people want to have stem cells in it. Are you guys considering that part of the equation as well? Yeah, we have. That's the, that's the biggest thing when we are talking about bioprinting. So we use, we use cells and we have a... In the team, cell biologists, material scientists, engineers, commercial people, and business people. So all of all of us and we are needed to be able to make this happen. Mm -hmm. So um, you've been with essentially this company or the uh, original version of the company for more than a decade. That's a very long journey as an entrepreneur. Um, it feels like one month. <laughs> How, what makes you keep going? Because it's not easy, right? Like one, you have to make money to support your family. I know that you have three beautiful children. Um, and, you know, we have to, you know, it's, it's a really hard journey because I know a lot of bioprinting companies are struggling. Um, so oh. how, do you, how do you get funding? How do you get your team together? How do you make people believe in the, the share the same vision that you do? That's a good question, but I think it all comes to the passion and that you do what you love. Then it became, it's not, not, I, I don't say it's easy, but it, it, it helps a lot when you do something that you love. And luckily I have been somehow been able to bump into a people that, that likes this, this area as well. So yeah. that helps as well. And the team, team is the most important thing. So. Nobody can do this kind of stuff alone, that's for sure. So passion and team are the key things, and then comes the product, I would say. Awesome. Well, we have some questions from the audience. Uh, one person asked, you know, what are some of the exciting things printers have 
uh, printed so far? I mean, you mentioned the kidney project, but do you guys print something that's related to kidney? Um, and what else have you printed so far? Or I think I have to think about what can I say. So all <laughs> so, the public, all, all the public stuff that uh, can be found from the internet, maybe it's like being part of this uh, Futurena team that started in 2017, we're still working with this Seppo Vainios group with kidney. That's that's it's not ready, but that's very interesting. Also, this brain stuff with the Ari Koistina house team that we began this whole journey. So that has been very interesting. And all of them are very, in, in their own ways, all of them are very interesting. Cancer cases, that we are studying multiple different types of cancer, personalized uh, healthcare studies with related to cancers and analyzing them, uh, kidney stuff, brain stuff, uh, drugs, bioimplants, even dental stuff, we have some ongoing, ongoing activities. So it's not our core, but we learn from that as well every day. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm also a neuroradiologist by trade and I love the the brain stuff. Um, um, actually, you know, I take care of cancer patients with brain cancer as well. Um, we actually harvest cancer from brain cancer uh, and then implant them on mice and then see how the medication work on these patients, on these mice, basically with the implantable um, cancer. It's very expensive, bilabarous and inefficient in my opinion. Um, so I really look forward to have some kind of, you know, disease model that's viable from the patient brain cancer cells and, you know, have a, a 3D model that's reliable that we can test drugs on because it really makes a huge difference. Oh. So average so familiar. Yeah. It's I think we need to collaborate. <laughs> well, <laughs> I see. I see this. <laughs> no, I'm just an clinician right now for for that part of my job, and uh, but it's it's pretty it's pretty um, sad and frustrating sometimes to see medication don't work, and also these medications mm -hmm. aren't harmless. You know, they have yeah. their own effects and stuff like that. Um, so it's a balance of life quality and life expectancy. And if the drug decreases life quality and does not prolong life. That's something we shouldn't use for the final days, yeah. personally. Yeah. That's yeah. true. So That's I, one of the reasons why we are in this business, I guess. Yeah, it is very meaningful. And um, now you're in Finland, correct? I am in Finland and uh, not a Tommy again. Co-founder is in Santa Monica and oh, yes. located there. And and we have been, just before this meeting, we had a meeting that we are going to open the showroom. Showroom in Santa Monica soon and also this uh, US entity in coming weeks. So fin finally. I know, an an another Tommy. I was another Tommy. <laughs> yeah, I look forward to the showroom opening. Um, but I want to talk about still going back to Finland a little bit um, because um, you know, the reason why we are um, always interviewing people from different parts of the world, because there are a lot of people who want to be entrepreneurs, probably in the same space. What kind of advice do you have for an entrepreneur, let's say in a university right now, who wants to found a company like yours, or not competitor, obviously, but you know, a biotech company. Um, is there any resources that, that you think that they should go out for? You know, where do they find mentor or any kind of support? Any suggestions on that? Mm, it's a difficult question and this would take another day to go through more <laughs> deeply, but, uh, but I can the short version. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I recommend to find first your passion. And when you know, when you do something that you like, then everything becomes easier. Even the investors can see it if you really like what you do and you have the passion for it. And all the other people see it who will follow you in your journey. So that's the most important thing. So if you are just thinking about money and finding, finding, a, finding a money to the idea that you have, then you have to tell it to the investors as well that you are not going to, this is not my passion, but this is a good idea. Let's find somebody to take this further. So 
this are the couple of simple simple uh, tips that I can give. That's really good advice. Um, I do think that having passion, I mean, I think there are a lot of different philosophies out there. You know, some people are like, find a job, you know, first figure out how to support yourself first before you like going for passion. Um, but I do think that for the long run, you have to have something um, in like a, a um, end of the tunnel or a, a goal to achieve a great amount of things. Like, um, actually, I did another interview very recently, that, and, and it's Dr. Kodafasani, and he said the same thing. You've got to have your goal very clear first to succeed, either from publication in, you know, journals or getting, uh, you know, recognition in academia or in entrepreneurship. You have to have a single goal that's very clear, and that's how you can be successful. So I believe... That's you know, <laughs> because Yeah, I no, you're... Know first yourself, and then you know what you want, and then make a plan. <laughs> yeah. Now, speaking of plans, uh, there's another um, audience uh, question. It says, what are your future plans for Brenter? So you mentioned now you have a Santa Monica showroom coming up. Uh, but, but what are the grander visions of it without, like, kind of secrets? Yeah, in general level, there are, like, three, three steps if we are taking it really general level. So... Like said that no, today we are providing this existing technology that we of course develop further all the time to everybody that is developing something in the field of bio and pharma or multimaterial printing. And the, on top of those, we are developing these applications. So mm -hmm. solutions for specific problems that are not clinical versions yet and not GMP production requirements. Uh, systems, but uh, things that can be done outside of human person, some kind of analytical stuff in uh, cancer side and stuff like this. And we will provide these as uh, hands-on solutions. So it's not like uh, you could do everything with that machine, but, but the thing that we want it to be done for CROs and uh, companies like this. And some of those applications will be taken into the clinical and GMP environment based on the partners that we have or will have in the future. Mm -hmm. And that's the phase that we are going through at the moment, thinking about what will be the final goal or goals mm -hmm. after the next step. Yeah, we I have mean, not locked it yet at the moment. Yeah. In some cases, somebody would say that you need to have it locked in the very early phase to have the goal. But... We are thinking differently. Okay. So, I mean, you're not just selling printer, obviously. You have, like, materials offering, right? Is that correct? Or um... We have the materials for pilot customers, and it will roll out to others as well at some point. Some of them are our own materials, and some of them from the partners that we have. So it's, it's a good yeah, combination. Who, uh, who are your uh, potential partners are too for the material side. Um, yeah. um, but what about software? Because I know you guys are working on some things with the software side. Like, are you going to... No, why is nobody talking about software for bioprinting? It's a good question. It's a good question. Now, we have been building our own, own software because there has not been any good ones available at least for our use. Yeah. So, and of course, it needs a lot of knowledge from both 3D printing in general, but also from bio and pharma fields. So that's why it's not very easy to just make a software for this kind of uh, bioprinting processes. It's not like the standard FDM printers that you can use or the softwares that you could use, at least in the challenging tasks that right. combines liquid to solid materials and everything between. So... We have been building our own own software, software that works in the web web en environment. So it can be, you can connect to the printer if you uh, enable the access from airplane if you want. So that's very easy. No installations needed. So, um, you know, I remember a long, long time ago when I was talking to a professor at a university who has a... Organovo printer actually um, it was pretty expensive because you know back then it's like half a million dollars to get a printer um, yeah. it was not used <laughs> because it's so hard to use mm -hmm. um, yeah yeah 
how long, you know, let's say a university student who, or, you know, maybe a graduate student right now get a printer, like from you guys, how long does it take to, to, for them to start print something actually useful? Uh, I just discussed about this with our specialist, Mr. Antti Arjonen, a few hours ago, and he told me that the students that he has had, it's usually one to two hours. Oh, wow. So, okay, you cannot, of course, know everything, but right. you can start it very easily. So it's, it's, it's easy software to use in general. That's a huge change. I think, you know, that's like a several decades difference, I guess. Yeah, that's something that uh, people from Finland has learned that the uh, user interface is the key. Yes. <laughs> Without mentioning any any company names. Right. Exactly. I was like, wait, did I get it right or was it Tokyo? Who are you? Uh, that's one one of them. Yeah. Okay. Well. Uh, well, thank you very much, Tommy, for this uh, very interesting conversation today. Um, I hope um, our conversation is recorded perfectly. I think it is. Um, I look very much for your showroom in Santa Monica and many good news from Printer in the near future. We will let you know and there will be some news in the end of this year. So let's okay. stay tuned. Yes, I will. Okay, bye guys. Thank you for joining us. Thank you and thank you all others who was watching. Bye-bye. That's it for this episode. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at 3 Heels, and check out the links in the show notes. See you next time.